Okay, good morning. Uh, hopefully you're up before noon. Uh, it is Tuesday, and uh, your assignment is going to be over 11.1 .1 and 11.2. And you'll also have a, uh, um, a hands-on activity I want you to do. Uh, and all of it is due on Thursday by 2.30 p.m. So make sure all this gets done before 2.30 and you send it to me. So 11.1, 11.2, all on, a, on the same page. And also you can send me a picture of what it is I'm going to have you do um, as a hands-on project around your house. And don't worry, I'm going to make it somewhat simple the best we can. Uh, so try to have a little fun with it. All right, so 11.1. .1. Um, we're going to talk about circumference, and we've talked about circumference already. Circumference is three times your diameter, remember? Three times around the circle uh, that I drew on the board. So three would be pi, so pi times the diameter. And remember that diameter is also twice your radius. So sometimes they'll give you the circ circumference as two pi r. And most students confuse this with area, which is pi r squared. So don't do that. Remember, area is a how many squares will fit into an object. So that's why the 2 there is called pi r squared. So we're not talking about area when we're talking about circumference. We're talking about the distance around something. So nothing's going to be squared on this. All right? So you need to make sure you know the formulas. So now let's go through. I'm going to do number four. I'm going to work on the even problems. You're going to do the odd problems. I'll tell you what the assignment is at the end of this. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. So number four is the diameter of a circle with a circumference of 63 feet. Find the diameter. So what is the diameter if the circumference is 63 feet? Okay, so we just write our formula. And this is what you're going to need to write on your paper. Circumference equals pi times the diameter. They gave me the diameter, so I'm using the first one. Okay, Circumference C is 63 times pi, or equals pi times diameter. I don't, don't know what diameter is. So I'm going to divide by pi. And the pi's cancel out. So we're just solving with algebra here. I don't need to reteach you that part. And then just take your calculator and you're going to um, take 63 divided by pi on your calculator. Okay, so 63 divided by the pi value. If you don't have a, a scientific calculator, you can use your calculator on your uh, iPad. It has it on there. So 63 divided by pi, and you'll get 20.05. All right. It doesn't say what to round it to, so round to the tenth or the hundredth. Either one is fine. And again, this is feet. 20 feet is the diameter all the way across. This is a big circle. All right, so that's how you do circumference. That's how you find either the diameter or the radius. If I wanted the radius here, I would just divide that di diameter by 2, and the radius would then be 10. Okay, so you got to be able to do both of those. All right, so let's look at number 6. It says something. It says the exact circumference. So the word exact means do not uh, use your calculator. Okay, so let me go through this so you understand. The exact circumference of a circle with a diameter of 5 inches. All right. So if the diameter um, is 5 inches, what is the circumference? All right. We want the exact circumference. Again, I use my formula. Circumference equals pi times the diameter. I don't know C. And D is 5. All right, so this would be my answer. The circumference is 5 pi inches. And if I wanted to round it, then I would take my calculator and do 5 times whatever the pi button is, and I would get 15 something. So uh, this is exact. This is as far as I can go by hand without a calculator. And that's what it means. When it says exact, don't use your calculator. All right, so there's two problems, one finding the diameter and one finding the circumference. Okay, uh, now I want to do something with arc length. So let's move all of this up a little bit, and we're going to do arc length. So two concepts you need to know from section one. Finding the circumference, the diameter, and the radius, and also the arc length. 
So arc length is the distance around something. So around the arc from one point to the next point. What is that distance? All right, so we already found the whole distance around the circle. That's called the circumference. We want just a portion of that, an arc of the circle. So how we find that is uh, pretty simple. It, there's a formula. You want to do your, um, your angles because you're going to set up a proportion, really. So remember, proportion is two fractions. So you want the arc length, which we're pr usually going to be finding that, but we're going to call that the arc length. We'll put a little L there. Arc length is to the total circumference, and that's uh, the circumference formula, 2 pi r. I used radius instead of uh, diameter. Uh, you can use the diameter if you want. That would just be pi times the diameter. Um, but 2 pi r is typically what we use for um, uh, the, the circumference. So the arc length, a portion of the circle, is to the whole circle. So the arc length is to the circumference as... The measure of the angle, um, so we'll call this A and B here, the angle, the arc, the minor arc A to B, could be a major arc as well, is to the whole degree of the circle, which is 360. So how proportions work is you have the part is to the whole as the part is to the whole. So arc length is to the circumference as the degree of that measurement is to the whole degree of the circle, 360. So now let's do an example. Let's go ahead and look at um, problem number eight. So number eight is a circle and center is Q and the endpoints of the arc are D and E. And this is 8.73 inches and the radius is 10 inches, and this is why we're using radius for our circumference. Now all you do is plug in what you know. We know the arc length, that's 8.73. 2 times pi times the radius, the radius is 10. I do not know the measure of the arc, but the whole circle is 360 degrees. So all you're doing is making sure you know the formula, the proportion, and filling in the pieces. And whatever's left really becomes your variable. So the measure of AB we could have put in as X. It doesn't matter how you write it, okay? So now we cross multiply. So 2 pi times 10 is 20 pi times X. And then 8.73 times 360 on your calculator is 3142.8. So I just did the cross multiplication. And now to get x by itself, I divide by 20 pi. And again, I'm probably going to want to know what 20 pi is. So 3142.8 divided by, and I'll use parentheses here in my calculator, 20 times pi in parentheses, hit equals, and x is 50.02. And what is x? What are we finding? We're finding the measure of the arc in degrees. So that's actually going to be 50 degrees. So make sure you know what it is you're finding. Let's do another problem, shall we? Let's do number 10. Number 10, we're going to find the radius. All right, so here is a circle. So you don't have to have your book out. I'll draw these. Um, out here is 260 degrees. Do not assume that this is 260 degrees. Obviously, that is an acute angle. So this goes from L to M. And the arc length out here is 38.95. Okay. So... So far in these two examples, they've given us the arc length. It doesn't really matter what they've given you. Whatever is left over, just do your cross multiplication and solve. So again, let's uh, put everything together. Our arc length, 38.95, we know that. Our circumference is 2 times pi times the radius. I don't know the radius. 
So that's going to be my R. The measure of the arc is 260 degrees. So this is the arc we're looking at, 260 degrees. And the whole circle is 360. So the part is to the whole as the part is to the whole. That's how those work. So just in case you don't know what I'm saying, the part for your fractions, the part is to the whole amount as the part is to the whole amount. That's how the, the proportions work. All right, arc length is to the whole circumference as the individual degree of the arc is to the 360 degrees of the whole circle. All right, so now we just cross multiply again. But what I want to go ahead and do is take 2 times pi and rewrite this. So 38.95 and over 2 pi, which is 6.28 and the radius, 260 over 360. And now cross multiply. I'm going to do this first. So 6. Point, I'm going to leave the 2 times pi on my calculator times 260. So that's 1633.63 r. So 6.28 or 2 times pi times 260 is this big number times r. And then do the next cross multiplication 38.95 times 360. And we get 14022. To get r by itself, to find the radius, we divide by the 1,633.63. I'm going to do that on my calculator. And the radius is 8.6. So we found the radius. In the first one, we found the angle of the arc. This one, we found the radius. Another one, you may have to actually find the arc measurement. Okay, so make sure you know what it is you are finding. All right, um, I'm going to continue with the video and do 11.2. Uh, if you want to stop this video and do 11.1, you can. So the homework for 11.1 is on page 598, and you are going to do the odds 3 through 9. And then come back to this and continue with section 2 in the video. So, whoops, now I'm going to go ahead and move everything up. Okay, so 11.2, we are finding area and area of a sector. All right, um, so the area of a circle is pi r squared. And the area of a sector is just like the uh, proportions we set up before, except you're doing a part of the circle, a sector of the circle. So again, let me reiterate this, the part is to the whole, and this works for anything that you're setting up as the part of something is to the whole. So let's do this. If we do um, the uh, area of the sector, okay, so let me just say, I'll just say sector. The sector, that's the part, is to the whole area of the circle. The whole area of the circle is going to be um, pi r squared. And then again, we're going to use the uh, angle of the area of the circle. So your measurement of your arc, the, that degree, over the 360s, the whole degree of the circle. So if we have, uh, I'll put one up here in a second uh, and we'll show this, but let's make sure we understand area of a circle. So let's do number four. Um, we have a circle. And it gives us a diameter, and it's 20 inches is the diameter. The area of a circle is pi r squared, so the area would be pi. The radius would then be 10. So you got to square that, and you would take 100 times pi on your calculator, in case you don't know what that is, and that's 314.2. Again, if it doesn't say what to round it to, go to your tenths. All right, and this is be inches squared. Remember, area... Area is how many squares will fit into that circle. So we need to have this, the two up there as a square. All right. Um, so that's how you find area. And you're going to need to find a few other things. So I'll come back uh, to the sector of the circle here in a second. Let's go ahead and do something else. How about uh, we actually find the radius, number eight. We want the radius of the circle with an area of 380 square inches. Okay. There's no picture. So the formula is A equals pi r squared. And again, just fill in what you've been given. A is 380 
doesn't matter that it's squared. Don't worry about that. Um, equals pi times r squared. All right, so we're trying to get r by itself, so we need to divide off the pi. So take your calculator and take 380 divided by pi, and that's 120.96, uh, and that's r squared. It's not r, it's r squared. So how do we get rid of the r? We get rid of the r by taking the square root of both sides. So the square root of that answer on your calculator is going to be um, 10.998, so we'll say 11.0. I say 0, .0 just to make sure everybody understood that this really wasn't 11 exactly. It's um, uh, been rounded, so 11 inches. That's how you find area. That's how you find radius, the different pieces. All right, so now let's go back to finding this, this sector, um, and I'll draw it up here again. So the sector is to the whole uh, area of the circle, pi r squared as uh, the measurement of the arc in degrees over the whole degree of the circle, 360. So I hope you understand that part. This is really important. All right, so let's do number 16. I'll draw it for you here. And number 16 is um, E, F, and D. This is 256 degrees over on this side. I don't know this angle, but we can get it. Uh, and the radius is 14. So the area of the sector in that this is shown in your book, uh, D, F, E, the area of that sector. I don't know what that area is. So that is going to be my um, X. Remember, it's area, so your answer should be squared. Um, the angle, uh, excuse me, pi times R, R is, the radius is 14, 14 squared, equals the angle from E to D here. So this is really E and D. So that angle, how do we get this angle right here? By taking 360 minus the 256. So 360 minus 256 gives me 104. So that is 104 degrees on your circle. Okay, 104 degrees over the whole degree of the circle, which is 360. All right, so now we cross multiply again. So 360x, and then take 14 squared times pi on your calculator, and then times 104. So 14 squared is 196 times pi times 104. And I get 64038.2. Make sure you're getting these numbers on your calculator. Make sure you do this. Um, okay, and then to get x by itself, the area of the sector, divide by 360. So divide that on your calculator by 360. And x equals 177.9. And this is in centimeters, so centimeters squared. So there's 177.9 square centimeters in this sector of the circle. Okay, let's do another one. So let's do number 18. And again, here's the circle. Here's D, F, E. And it gives us 75 degrees for our angle. Uh, and the radius is 4 feet. Okay, so now let's set it up. The area of the sector. What is the sector? This is the sector and the problem. So the we don't know the area of the sector. So I'm just going to put sector on here like this. But the whole area is pi times the radius 4 squared equal to the angle 75 over the whole amount of degrees 360. So you have the sector, area of the sector, which we don't know, over the pi r squared equals 75 degrees over the total degree is 360. So we'll call sec the sector x times 360, so 360 times x. Again, any of these positions, these four positions, can have something missing and you have to solve for it. All right, so we're just doing the basic stuff at this point, just finding the area of the sector. And then do this first, 16 times pi, four squared is 16, so 16 times pi on your calculator, times 75. And that's 376, nope, 3,769.9. .9. Okay, how do we get x by itself? Divide off the 360. 
and that will give us the area of the sector in feet. So 3769.9 divided by 360, and we get 10.5 square feet because this is the area, the area of the sector area. How many squares will fit into that area? So you need to have the two there on your units. Okay, so now your assignment for section two is on page 606. And before I give this to you, make sure you understand there's another, there's a third part to the assignment. You have 11.1, you're gonna have this 11.2, and then I'm gonna have you do something here in a second. All right, so don't shut this off until you, you understand what the third part of your assignment is. All right, so for section two, uh, 606, you're going to do the odds, uh, 3, 5, and 7, and you're going to do 15 and 17. Okay, so not a lot of problems for our e-learning stuff, which is great. I want to make sure you can do the basics. But now, what is the third part of your assignment? So, the third part of our assignment, I want you to take a picture of, just a second, I'm going to tell you. I want you to find... A circle somewhere in your house the bottom of a can um, I don't know maybe you have a half circle somewhere I don't know don't do half circle um, but uh, there's different circles around your house I want you to take a picture of the circle I need you to find the area excuse me the circumference and the area so you might be sitting there going well I don't have a ruler uh, I'm not sure what to do, so here's an example. So let's say I take a picture of this circle, and um, I don't have a ruler. Um, I'm not sure what to do, but remember, you do have some things online that you can use on a picture and measure some things. So you could do it that way. You also, uh, if, if you don't have a ruler, you can use something different, such as if you use the end of your thumb, half of your thumb as a measurement. You can be creative in this and that's totally okay. This is meant to be a little fun and just to get it done. You don't have a lot of problems, so let's make sure you can get it done, all right? And do it, do it right. If you have a, if you have a ruler, use the ruler, that's fine. But say this is your, your uh, circle, you need to find, make sure you, I, I'm given the picture of this and you uh, give me all the work on your paper with 11.1, 11 .1, 11 all right? So, you're going to uh, take a measurement. Um, uh, you're going to have the diameter. Tell me what the diameter is. And then tell me what their, their circumference is. Circumference equals pi times the diameter. And then I want the area. Area is pi r squared, which obviously you're going to have to find the radius, which is half the diameter. Make sure you tell me that. And then tell me the area. So I want the circumference. And I, in whatever units you, you did, if you use your thumb, go ahead and use your thumb. If you used your centimeters on your on your ruler or inches that's fine uh, you could use feet if you had a big circle like your cul-de-sac your cul-de-sac is a huge circle that'd be interesting if you had um, a yardstick you go out and measure that um, and then also the area what is the area so you can use a can you can use a cup a glass of some sort uh, a bucket uh, whatever makes a circle so i want two things i want the circumference and the area so that's the third part of your assignment. I want 11.1, 11.2, and the work for this third part all on one page, front and back. I don't care. It could be two pages if you need the room. But send me the picture of that homework and the picture of what it is you found the uh, measurement of. Okay? That is due at 2.30 on Thursday. If there are any questions, you need to give me those questions by noon on Wednesday and then I will send out responses to those questions. All right, great. Have a great week, um, and uh, enjoy your, your nice sunny uh, weather this week. See ya.